Hello and welcome to Biology 150, Nutrition. My name is Dana Manning. I will be your instructor for this course. And in this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about the course policies and some other information pertinent to uh, completing the course. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the course runs. We'll take a look at what we're going to address in the class, the syllabus, and some of the policies and procedures that we'll be following uh, so that you have a good handle as to how to be successful in this class. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and I'll also give you some information about how to access the course textbook. So, what is this course all about, you ask? Well, we're going to talk about a variety of things. Some things designed to give you a good background in what nutrition is, regardless of what your personal background is. Uh, certainly, nutrition covers a lot of the fundamental concepts um, of metabolism, which is really just bio, biology and chemistry, and a little bit of biochemistry. So if you've taken those courses, you might notice some repeat of that material. In this course, however, I address them in a way so that even if you haven't taken those courses, hopefully you'll be able to get a good sense for how most things work. Uh, we are going to move past some of the more advanced concepts, although I do invite those who have had, again, background in, say, biochemistry, um, etc., to, to maybe look a little deeper into those particular um, areas. So we'll take a look at how nutrition works in the body and what all of the definitions and what are all of the players within that, uh, that play, if you will, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about how we use nutrition. So we use nutrition therapeutically and medically in a variety of areas. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Most importantly, I think, uh, for you folks, I'm going to have you address nutrition as you see it in your contemporary lives. So what are the issues and the things that you folks are faced with, not only as students and learners, but as people uh, trying to deal with the vast amount of information that comes out about nutrition? So to me, that's the most exciting part of the course, and I hope that you'll agree. So these are the objectives for the course. Uh, again, they should follow along with the description that I just told you about. Uh, we're going to talk about the basic chemical character of the macro and micronutrients, talk about basically how metabolism works from the chemical perspective as well as from the uh, physiological and, and anatomic perspective, how the body actually works. Uh, we'll look at nutrition throughout the life cycle, some of the therapeutic diets, uh, and then, as I said, my favorite part of the course is talking about uh, current and popular trends and issues, not only with diet and nutrition, but also with some of the broader aspects of nutrition, such as um, social, agricultural, and economic influences on how people eat. So again, that's our course objectives. So a quick overview of the class for you folks. As you know, it's a three-credit course. It's given over 16 weeks for the full semester or eight weeks for the truncated half semester. If you are taking the 16-week version of the course, things are a little bit more spread out. Hopefully, this is designed to allow you to take more than one course at a time. If you're taking the eight-week version of the course, it's a little bit more compressed. Obviously, it's over a bit sooner, but it does contain the same material to allow you to achieve those three credits within a much shorter time frame. The course is divided into eight modules. For each module, the same structure pretty much applies. We'll be doing a variety of things consisting of a presentation, readings, a discussion, and an exam. Basically, you prepare for yourself, you can interact with the discussion uh, while you're re doing the readings and engaging with the presentation. The quizzes will be open throughout each module. However, at the end of each module, the quizzes will shut. They will be done. So you do need to complete the quiz for that material during the time that the module is offered. This helps us keep up with the class pacing so that people aren't getting behind and doing everything at the end of the class. The quizzes are 200 points each, and the discussions are 100 points each. What I'd like for you to do is to have at least two discussion postings per week. Typically, one 
will be your thoughts on the matter, and then typically the second one is a response to one of your colleagues. Uh, and I would like the content to be relatively substantial, uh, meaning that you can't just say, hey, I agree with you, Joe. Uh, I'd like you to talk about why or how you agree with Joe. So again, take a little time, write your thoughts. Two postings a week is not too many. Um, and I hope you'll find the discussion issues fairly engaging and find it relatively easy to write a couple of sentences for them. Um, there is going to be a final paper, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but it's worth 400 points. And we do, of course, follow the MCC standard grading scale by percentage to determine your letter grade uh, when we add up the number of points that you get out of that point total. This slide shows the letter grade. Um, as per the MCC standard grading scale as it applies to this course. Um, again, the course contains a total of 2,700 points. So if you break that down by the percentages, um, I invite you to do the math yourself uh, if you'd like to make sure that I'm right. But um, this, in a sense, is how I determine the letter grade which gets entered into your uh, transcripts at the end of the course. So just to expand upon the schedule a little bit, um, for the eight-week classes, each module basically equates to one week of the course. Uh, for the 16-week classes, each module basically equates to two weeks of the course. And again, this is more spread out to allow you probably to take multiple classes during the semester uh, rather than the short version, which is kind of, you know, getting the classes in and, in my mind at least, very difficult probably to take multiple classes at a time. Uh, with that type of time frame. Um, anyhow, for the most part, the weeks will start on Mondays. Uh, discussions and exams will be open during the time the module is open. You must complete them during this time. I will not accept late discussions and exams. Okay? Uh, and that's something that I've learned after doing this course a little bit. This is critical to help keep the pacing of the course so that you can complete all of the material and actually learn it, which is the most important thing to me. Not that you simply get things done, but that you're actually learning something. So of course, you can self-pace yourself during this time. Um, obviously, you would start with the reading and or the presentations uh, to get a sense of what you're looking at, um, and then interact, of course, with the discussions. I would usually wait to do the exam until after you've given yourself a few days to do that. Um, but if for some reason you have a busy week and you want to do things earlier, you do have that flexibility. Uh, so again, for the eight-week classes, each module is basically each week, and for the 16-week classes, uh, each module is basically two weeks. So a lot of folks want to ask me, of course, what are the assessments like? What you'll find is that they're mostly multiple choice questions. Um, I am trying to refine them, so... Uh, if you guys decide you really don't like a particular question and it doesn't work out well, I'll certainly change it for the next go-round. Um, I will have some short answer questions, probably somewhat limited given the number of participants in this class. And in general, the assessment should not take you more than one hour. Uh, I will try to get them graded and back to you as soon as I possibly can after they are completed. Just a quick note on the short answer questions. When I ask a short answer question, it's usually because there are multiple ways to have a right answer. Uh, you know, nutrition is certainly a field of gray, not necessarily black and white. So regardless of what you feel the answer is, um, for the most part, there's many ways to be right. And I will take all of those ways to be right into account. But for your portion of this work, please be persuasive and thoughtful in your commentary. Uh, you know, please try to use your best writing skills as well when you write these short answer questions. Um, it helps to convey your meaning. It helps me to understand what you are thinking. Um, so again, uh, for the most part, I will comment on them if you're really off base, but I do accept multiple right answers when there are short answer questions in your exams. For the final paper, what I would like for you guys to do is to select a reading from the suggested readings list, which I will be posting, um, or select a nutrition story in the news, something that captures your attention, 
or you could even propose your own, something that, of course, uh, deals with nutrition, food policy, um, agriculture, whatever sort of spikes your interest. And I'd like you to write a two to three page reaction paper for that. I will have a detailed description of the elements that I'd like in the paper uh, posted within the course as well. So I intend for this to be fun and to help open your eyes to uh, other sources of nutrition information, as well as potentially critically appraising those sources. Should you believe everything that you read? And of course the answer is no, but uh, I think until you get until you challenge yourself to kind of pick apart some of those stories, we all tend to be vulnerable to a lot of uh, crazy information. So again, this is meant to be fun. It's not meant to be very stressful whatsoever. And the final project will be due uh, the day before the end of the class to give me enough time to kind of look at things and get your grades in on time. Uh, so you have the entire class to do this. If you wanted to start on day one, I would suggest that. So there you go. That's your final project slash paper. For the course textbook, what I will say is that renting is absolutely your best option, particularly for the versions of the course that are eight weeks, as they are very short, and often by the time you receive a textbook that's ordered, the class is already well underway. Um, I'd like you to get access to the textbook right away. Uh, for many of you, uh, renting through CourseSmart is a completely doable option. The online rental is about $60. Uh, and you have it certainly for the duration of the course. The only drawback to this option is that you will be reading on a computer screen, which I know is maybe not some people's favorite method of uh, accessing textbooks. Um, just to know that Amazon actually offers physical textbook rentals, meaning that you can go into Amazon just as you would to buy a book um, and actually have the book shipped to your house but you have to ship it back at the end of a particular time period. I've done this and it works pretty well. Um, and it's, of course, much cheaper than buying the textbook outright. I don't want to discourage anybody from buying the textbook, but keep your expenditures as little as possible. So I'd like to keep as much open communication as I can for you folks during this course. I will try to respond to your emails as quickly as I can. Um, if they are urgent, I will certainly try to respond to them immediately. I do monitor my emails constantly, uh, but please do give me a little bit of leeway, especially if it's a question of a routine nature. I'm also attempting to set up an online conference room maybe once or twice during the course. So that's something that I will uh, be communicating about with you guys uh, a little bit later if I get it set up successfully. Please let me know as soon as possible if you are having trouble or if something is affecting your ability to complete your work on time. Um, I like to think of myself as a very understanding person and I'll certainly work with you to the best of my ability. Uh, but if it's the kind of thing where you're going to tell me at the very end of the course that you didn't complete the work uh, because of X, Y, and Z reason, then there really isn't much I can do to help, unfortunately. So again, I will try to be open with you folks. I expect you to be open with me in return. So a quick introduction to myself uh, and why am I qualified to teach you this course. Um, I am actually a registered dietitian, licensed nutritionist. Uh, I actually live in northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, but I grew up in upstate New York, so I'm not not a New Englander, but certainly uh, an East Coast person. Um, I have worked clinically as a dietitian for over 15 years now. Uh, I graduated from Cornell University with my nutrition degree and did my clinical training at Geisinger Medical Center in Danville, Pennsylvania. Um, subsequent to that, I actually decided to go back to school um, a number of years back, and I became also a pharmacist. So my full-time job right now is that I am a professor at the Wilkes University School of Pharmacy. I also work as a clinical pharmacist uh, at the Regional Hospital of Scranton in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So I straddle both worlds, nutrition and pharmacy, but I, I love teaching, um, and I love teaching nutrition. I love to talk about nutrition, and I like to teach it to students and the public and patients, uh, people of all stripes. Uh, so I'm really glad to have an opportunity to work with MCC uh, and to do this course for you. So in 
sort of in a side note, um, my husband's actually a dairy farmer. I do live on a farm, so that fuels a little bit of my interest uh, on the agricultural side of nutrition as well. Um, so feel free to ask me any questions about myself if you are interested. So I just wanted to say a couple of notes about the key to success in this course. Um, having run it now a few times, I'd like to let you know that this is not necessarily a terribly difficult course. Um, I feel that I've tuned the level of difficulty kind of right in for uh, the average student that is taking this course. Some people may find they want a little bit more challenge. Some folks might be a little bit overwhelmed by some of the information, some of the science that I talk about in this course. So I try to hit right down the middle. But the key to success for everybody is to simply do the work. If you go long periods of time without engaging in this course, without doing the discussions, without doing the exams, you will not do well, regardless of whether or not you are very bright or you've had a lot of science background or whatever. Uh, the key is simply to do the work, and that requires discipline on your part as the student to go in, take a look at the discussion boards, get the exams done. So I've had people who have not done very well, unfortunately, simply because they did not do the work of the course. Um, so a little bit, a little bit each week will really go a long way and pay off for you in the end. So I want to wish you all good luck in the course. I hope that I'm able to present some information that not only solidifies your basic understanding of nutrition, but also gives you some food for thought, if you will, if I can make that terrible joke, uh, about the way we interact with nutrition in our daily lives. My goal is to have you all come out being much more informed students and people and consumers uh, and to be able to make good choices and to inform your family and friends uh, who might be asking you what you've learned in your course, uh, some interesting information to make good choices about nutrition. So best of luck. Um, please feel free to communicate with me as much as possible, and we'll talk to you soon.